Hi, it's Kristen and it's Finish Along. This was a readathon created by T Books and Tasmin, who I recently started um, watching on YouTube. She seems like such a funny, kind, sweet woman, um, and I'm loving her content. And then I saw that she had this readathon that she'd just come up with, and I was very interested in taking part. <laughs> So Finishathon is just about finishing books that you've been partway through for ages, and I have a few of those. So this is what I'm going to attempt to read. I don't think I'm going to finish all of these, but I want to finish at least a couple and get further into um, other books. So first up we have Sisters by Barbara Mortimer. This is a non-fiction book about um, the nurses who worked during World War II. I've been reading this book on and off for about five years. I started it in my second year of uni when I had a lot going on, um, but I hated like not reading. I had a lot of uh, projects and performances coming up and there were moments where I did have a little bit of free time so I wanted to take a book with me to rehearsals and stuff so whilst I had like a half hour break and other people were off doing their things I had something to read and I thought I can dip in and out of this book because it's just short accounts from different nurses and then obviously you hit the summer holidays finished uni so could dive into full length novels and things so I put this down and I only ever pick it up when I'm sort of not reading anything else but don't yet want to start a new book I'll read like a little bit of this and then I'll start a new book I'll finish that book I'll read a little bit of this start a new book so I've been reading it on and off for five years I am 238 pages into it and a lot of this back bit is um, acknowledgements and index and stuff. So I only have that much left to read, so maybe I can get this done this week. Then my next longest book on my TBR, the longest that I've had it, is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Renietta Lodge. I started this two years ago for my In Real Life book club. But I never finished it for my book club because I started a new job, then we decided to do the book club, then I started another new job, uh, which I worked simultaneously, not at the same time, literally, but like both part-time jobs that I worked throughout the week. Um, and I got really busy with work and I only managed to read, I think about like 40% before the book club. And then since then, again, it's another one I dip in and out of, but like quite infrequently. And I'm kind of ashamed that I haven't finished it. I started it so long ago and I was really enjoying it. And it's such a staple book to do with race and um, yeah, race issues, especially in Britain. So I'm, I feel really bad that I haven't finished it. So again, I'm currently, I've lost my bookmark on my Kindle, it's not at the point I was at, but my Goodreads was last updated at 59%, so I'm just going to find 59% of the way through on my Kindle and just go from there even if I end up rereading a bit, because I think I, I think I got into the 60% uh, mark, but I, it's lost my previous location on my Kindle. <laughs> then I have... <laughs> Love Poems, edited by John Stammers, the Picador Book of Love Poems. I picked this up from the library um, not too long ago, I think it was within this year or towards the end of last year, and I'm 50 pages in exactly. Again, because it's poetry, I just pick it up every now and then. I don't just sit and read a bunch of poetry, I just read it here and there, so I don't think I'll finish this this week but I'll maybe dip in and out of it, see if I can get a few more pages through. 
And then I have a couple of audiobooks. So I have one that I literally started um, last week. I started reading this on the last day of the reading rush, so only last Sunday. Um, and it is Taking Up Space by Chelsea Quachi and Ora Agumbi. And it's A Black Girl's Manifesto for Change. And it's a really short audiobook. So it's like five and a half hours, and I'm two and a half hours through it. So I reckon I can finish that this week. And then one that I started this week, which isn't the purpose of this readathon, but I started it to finish it yesterday for a book club that then fell through. So I never finished it because I wasn't on that time crunch that I had felt. But I realised that actually I've got it on my library's audiobook service and I need to return it and I can't renew it again because I've already renewed it like twice. Um, and it's due back in two days, so I am on a time crunch. So the time crunch and originally having a purpose to read it is what I'm saying to myself is a reason to read, um, to read it for the finishathon. And that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And this is like an 11 something hour long audiobook and I have nine hours left of it. But if I listen on two times speed, so that book is my priority. Girl, Woman, Other is my priority. Then I think taking up space. And then this, perhaps? Although I think René Lodge's book is more readable because it's like a continuous non-fiction, whereas this is very much like a bitty kind of non-fiction. Um, although I have been reading this for five years, so I feel like I need to get to this. I'm going to prioritise my audiobooks and then I'm going to see how I'm feeling. That's what I'm going to decide on. So go on with another top priority, then taking up space, and then I'm going to see how I feel with my physical and ebooks. That's the plan. I'm <clears throat> currently listening to Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Really enjoying it. It's just like a collection of stories about various women in their lives. Um, and how they all sort of intersect. Like the first story is about um, one character and then the next one's about her daughter and then the next one's about her best friend and the next one's about a different woman and the following story is about her daughter and then her daughter's best friend so like they all sort of are sort of connected and you see like the different points of view of how yeah, their lives go and the various ways they interact with each other or stop interacting with each other. Um, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I'm listening to it on audiobook, so occasionally sort of forgetting where I am and whose character I'm on, which I think maybe would be better if I were reading it physically. Um, but it's a good narration on the audiobook. Um, and I'm, yeah, really enjoying it. I think I've got, still got about five hours left of the audiobook. Um, but yeah, it's good. I finished reading Girl, Woman, Other, or you know, listening to it. Um, it was great. I gave it four stars. Um, it was just like a really intricate, detailed story of different women living in Britain, uh, their experiences being black in Britain, a uh, lot of stuff to do with being queer, um, gen like gender, um, conversations around gender and race and sexuality and feminism, really enjoyable. 
I think my favourites were, my favourite perspectives, or the most interesting to me, were Amma and Dominique. They're both, like, theatre kind of people, and I'm a theatre kind of person. Um, so I really liked that aspect. Uh, Dominique's story also dealt with, like, domestic abuse. I also really liked Morgan, who's a non-binary character. Their chapter obviously goes into, like, trans issues and gender identity, which was really interesting. And then Grace, I really enjoyed that chapter as well. Um, I think that one went, like, further, the furthest back in history. Um, but it was great. I finished the audiobook for Taking Up Space by Chelsea Quachi and uh, Ori Agumbi. It was good. It covered the intersections of race and you know, being black and being a woman in terms of like higher education, mental health, activism, relationships and all those sorts of experiences whilst being a black woman. Uh, I found it really informative and interesting. Obviously, I can't personally relate to everything. Uh, some of the things were generally relatable, like university, mental health, that kind of stuff. Um, but obviously, things got a lot more personal for the authors, and some of their friends also shared experiences. And it was overall really interesting. Um, would recommend, definitely. Uh, it's a four-star book for me, I think. And that's my second book down for finish on. So for the past couple of days, in the morning and before I go to bed, I've been reading segments of Sisters. I haven't read like a whole lot, but the segments seem to be getting shorter. So I've been dipping in and out. I've maybe read like 20 pages, I would say. Uh, doubt I'm going to finish this, uh, just because it's not the kind of book that I would just sit and read straight through. Um, so, probably not going to finish it, but happy that I've, like, got another, like, little, little bit through. And then this morning, instead of picking up that, I picked up my Kindle and I read a few pages, um, or quite a few pages of, um, why I'm now going to talk to white people about race. Um, I think I explained before, I lost where I was with it, so I just started from the last percentage mark that I had put on Goodreads, which was 59%, but that was in the middle of like, a chapter, so I just started from the beginning of that chapter, which was only like 8% before, so I started from 51%, um, starting back on the chapter um, of uh, All About Feminism. And I do remember some of it, like I recall reading it before. Um, there's a bit where she talks about uh, the TV show Girls and like the lack of diversity and talks about going on a radio show and talking about uh, race and uh, getting a lot of backlash for it. Um, and I, re I recalled all that. And now I'm at the point, I think, where it's not sounding so familiar, so I think I've caught up roughly with where I was. I think I'm in the 60% now, so yeah, again, I'm probably not going to finish it uh, by the end of Finish Thon, but to get a, another, you know, little chunk of the way through is always good. Let's wrap up Finish Thon. So, Last night I sort of switched between reading uh, the Love Poems book, Sisters, and Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. Just in between, like, having dinner, I watched some TV, um, and then getting ready for bed and stuff like that, I dipped in and out of each of those books. I didn't finish any of the books. <laughs> I didn't finish any of them, but I feel like getting a bit further through them and 
like reigniting my want to finish them like I'm really in the mood to just finish all these now is a good thing in itself so to start finish the thon I read Girl Woman Other on audiobook uh, this is by Bernadine Evaristo I think I explained it's just like a compilation of uh, different looks into different women's lives and how their lives intersect. I give it four out of five stars. I think I'm going to leave like all of my Goodreads reviews for each of these books below so you have like more coherent thoughts on each of them. Um, yeah, enjoyed that one, finished that book. Then I finished Taking Up Space by Chelsea Kwachi and Ore Agumbe and again four out of five stars. Uh, Girl and Woman Other is a fiction book and this one was non-fiction and I was about halfway through it. It was it was great. Uh, I think I again explained it was very much for black girls but they said you know anyone can read it and hopefully we'll get something from it. It definitely was informative to me about things that I wouldn't necessarily consider um, and also uh, learning about these specific women's experiences in uh, university life. I felt like it was relatable in a lot of ways to my university life in terms of like generally the social life and mental health stuff. It was relatable to me or to I definitely saw their experiences in people I knew at uni um, but obviously couldn't relate 100% because I as a white person never felt um, like put off anything uh, because of my race um, and you know was surrounded by white people at university uh, they went to Cambridge. I did not go to <laughs> Cambridge or Oxford or any universities like that. Um, but my university or my course wasn't hugely diverse. There were a few black students in my year and in the year below me, which are mainly where I socialised. Um, but was predominantly white and then in the societies that I joined um, I was in the Dramatic and Musical Society and then I was in an acting society and both of those had again a few students um, who weren't white but not a huge amount um, so when they were talking about the specific like importance of having um, societies that were for, specifically for, uh, black students. It, yeah, something I guess I've never considered or I did not consider at the time being at uni. Um, which, yeah, was kind of eye-opening. I gave that one four stars as well. I highly recommend it to everyone <laughs> um, and that was the second book I finished then I dipped like I said dipped in and out of all the other books so I have like the statistics of how far I got into each I'm just pulling my notes so in sisters at the beginning of this readathon I was on page 238 and now I'm on page 261. The segments in this definitely got shorter as I went along and this covers uh, the nurses working in the World War, uh, World War II specifically, and the way that it goes through the book, the beginning of the book is like the lead up to the war and then the next segment is at the beginning of the war, middle of the war, end of the war, and now I'm at the bit that's like um, the, the end of the war, like things actually stopping like VE Day 
that kind of stuff. Um, my favourite part of this so far, <laughs> the problem is, because I've been reading it over like a five year period, I've forgotten quite a lot of stuff. And some stuff I just generally knew because I learned about it in history class or I'm just generally interested um, or I love period dramas <laughs> so um, but my favorite story in this is about or the one that made me be like wow it's about um, a bunch of nurses who were working in a maternity ward who got called away to handle something I think they had like a bunch of uh, soldiers brought into the hospital and so they needed like all hands on deck and so they got like every available nurse to those soldiers which meant that there were no nurses in the maternity ward that evening and a woman in went into labour and then another woman was going into labour and the second woman who was in labour delivered the baby of the first woman who went into labour and I was just like I can't I could never do that I was like wow um so not just the nurses who are great women just oh man incredible and next up with uh the book why I'm no longer talking to white people about race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I, according to my Goodreads, started off at 59%. I was that far through it. I lost my bookmark place on my Kindle, so I just started from the chapter, bef like the beginning of the chapter before 59%, which was the one about feminism, which was, was about 51%. And I have ended up reading that whole chapter and now I'm on 66% going into the chapter about race and class. So I read like 15% but if we're saying that I was already at 59% <laughs> then I only read 7, progressed 7% but I read a fair amount. And then finally, I picked up the Picador Book of Love Poems, like, last minute, before I went to bed. I hadn't made any progress on this, and I thought, let's just read a few poems before I go to bed. Easy to do. So I was on page 50 when I, at the beginning, finished them. Didn't read anything until last night, and now I am on page 62. So I read... 12 pages worth of poems. Um, some of the pages are like full page poetry and then some like that, that's poem on a page and then some are like that. <laughs> so um, it was pretty easy to read 12 pages before I went to bed. It took like 10 minutes. Maybe that meant I didn't fully take in all the poems. Um, but poetry can be re hit and miss for me anyway and I was sort of reading this as an experiment to get into poetry again potentially because um, I've never really read poetry since university and then I only read like one poetry book which was Bo Burnham's poetry book not for university but just like whilst I was there um, but before that like hadn't read any since like A levels when I read a lot of poetry. We did the Brontes, we did the Romantics. It was a time. <laughs> anyway, so I finished two books and then I made progress with three more books and now I'm in the mood to finish those like within this week I think is what I want to do so I can like fully start fresh with having no books on my currently reading on Goodreads and just go back to reading like a book at a time or have just like one non-fiction and one fiction going at the same time because I think I've overwhelmed myself 
having, at one point I had about seven books on my current reading on Goodreads and it was too much. So I want to start from like zero. <laughs> That's the plan. Anyway, I feel accomplished. I think because the physical books I'm reading were the ones I didn't finish and the ones I did are on audiobook, it kind of feels like I didn't because I can't, you know, say like, oh, I finished this, put it on my shelf. Not this one, this is a library book. Like, I finished it, put it on my shelf, done. Like, I can't physically move any of my books off my TBR onto my bookshelf because I've not finished any of them. But I have an audiobook. Do you see what I mean? That's if I finish a thon. I just want to finish all the books now. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I will be back with a new video soon.